welcome to Marshmallow Reads. I'm Marcy and this is the first video in my Vlogmas series and this is just uh, gonna be a bit of an introduction to who I am, what Vlogmas is, at least to me, and then I will get into some of my favorite tropes in fiction. <laughs> For starters, in case you're new around here, I'm Marcy, like I said, and I am a graduate student right now. I am a PhD candidate in biochemistry right now, trying my best to stay sane during this whole process, and part of that is having fun making these videos. Ah! <laughs> I've been on booktube for almost a year now, which is kind of crazy, and I've had a lot of fun with it. Last year, I did not do anything for Vlogmas, which is a thing that's been around for a little while. It's the idea of like posting a video every single day for December. There's no way I'm gonna do that. I am going to aim for like three videos a week on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We'll see how this goes for me. The reason why I wanted to do Vlogmas this year is a sort of way to celebrate the end of the semester and uh, use up some of the itty bitty extra free time I have around this time of year. And I thought it sounded really fun to have different sorts of videos going on and having like a set series of these sorts of videos. So yeah. The topic for this video is going to be just some of my favorite tropes that I have found in fiction over my years of reading. One of the very first ones that I thought of was the unhinged best friend. I don't know if any of these tropes that I'm naming today have like an official name, but this is what I'm going to be calling them. So when I think of an unhinged best friend is like an absolutely ride or die person who's going to be there for you no matter what. Like they will have your back to the max. Like you got a suicide mission to go on? No problem. You got an arduous journey ahead of you through unknown dangerous lands? No problem. The types of characters I'm thinking of are Severo from the Red Rising series, Amos from the Expanse series, like just, it's so good. Like they, they're they like kind of just chaotic, absolutely chaotic, but like they love you so very much and they com combining their chaos and their love for you is what makes them wonderful. Kind of similar to the last trope, uh, this one is found family. Like, I'm sure you've heard of this before. It is just the wonderful feeling of getting to choose your own family. Like, your birth family may or may not be wonderful on their own, but your found family is where you find the perfect pieces that fit into your life and that are going to support you in wonderful ways. The best found family of literally all time in all sorts of media forms is the fam from Fast and Furious. No one can convince me otherwise, and if you try, I will fight you. Yeah, sometimes your birth family sucks or they're just all gone, and other times you just get a bonus family, which is so nice. The main characteristic here is that they care for each other no matter what, and they have all of the support and love to give out. It's great. Many of the books that I end up loving have this trope, um, like A Long Way to a Small and Great Planet, a new one from this year, One Last Stop, August's new roommates in the apartment that she moves into, like they will love you and they will help you out no matter what and you are going to be loved and supported for who you are no matter what that is. And like this trope does tend to pop up a lot in queer fiction because of, you know, how often queer people are rejected by their birth families. On a Sunbeam, another new one from this year, that entire ship's crew is just like ride or die all the way and I love it. The Diviners, yeah. I forgot about this one because of the awful ending to the series, but outside of that, they are a crew of outcast kids, young adults who find each other because they've got the weird powers and they need uh, to hide from like the government and stuff and uh yeah they find some bffs and it's great next up is fish out of water like arthur dent in the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy and it's it's usually just like a normal dude a normal person thrown into some weird sci-fi shit or other kinds of shit but there is weirdness abound also think like alice falling down the rabbit hole in alice in wonderland and stuff 
Kid Detective. Oh, this one's so good in all sorts of media. The biggest ones I think of are absolutely Nancy Drew. I absolutely adore all of the Nancy Drew video games and I've finally started reading the books as well and they're pretty great too. And Angus MacDonald from the Adventure Zone Balance series. These are the kids who love to snoop and go through other people's things and because you're reading them do it, you get to do it vicariously. And hopefully uh, you scratch that itch and don't do it to other people, but uh, I'm, I'm not saying anything. They are not afraid to ask questions of the suspicious adults involved in whatever case they're trying to solve. They may have seen or heard something important regarding the case and maybe whoever said or did those things didn't necessarily consider them a threat because of their age. Their age gives them a sort of perceived incompetence and experience and it can give them a sort of stealth bonus. And not only are they trying to not get caught by the culprit, they are also trying not to get caught by other adults, like in their snooping around because they're not an authority figure, they can just kind of get kicked out of places. Big ass, <laughs> big ass, that's not the trope. Um, <laughs> Big ass and or magical library. I'm thinking the Claire's Great Library and Garth Nix's Old Kingdom series, like specifically in Lyriel. Oh man, a series of abortion events is filled with these sorts of places. This series features several non-supernatural libraries with a massive system of filing cabinets, or a collection of banned books, or maybe a pile of valuable secret documents hidden under a table. There's also the archives at the university in the Name of the Wind series. It's like massive, absolutely massive, no natural light, and it is like a labyrinth of, of bookshelves basically. And it has secret passages. And then the last trope for today is The Haunted House. What a classic. Uh, this year I read The Good House, which was such a good haunted house that had like a character of its own it was very spooky. And then the very classic Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Oh, and then the House in the House of Leaves book. That one is just like ultimate spooky. What the heck is going on here? You're much more likely to find a haunted house in North America, I would say, rather than like a haunted castle. We just don't have that many castles here. The creepy housekeeper is always on the suspect list, although they may or may not actually be the culprit. Maybe it's a ghost that's haunting this house. Maybe it's a demon, or maybe it is something beyond comprehension. Love all of these options. I could go on, but for today, I'm gonna stop there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to my channel for videos like this and for the rest of my Vlogmas series. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Do something nice for yourselves. Do something nice for others. And with that, I will see you on Friday. Bye!